If not me, who? If not now, when? If not here, where? I'll never be here now again. If not love, why? If not face, how? If not you and I, why? For such a time as this, I stand here right now. Every broken road I travel down, every chance I missed got me here somehow. Every shattered, winding, turn and twist. For such a time as this, I could walk right by, pretend that. Don't see where would I be now if someone hadn't seen me? If not me, who? If not now, when? If not here, where? I'll never be here an hour again. For such a time as this, I stand here right now. Every broken road I travel down, every chance I miss got me here somehow. Every shattered, winding, turn and twist. For such a time as this, for such a time as this, for such a time as this. If not love, what? If not face, how? If not you and I, why? If not love, what? If not face, how? If not you and I, why, why? If not love, what? If not faith, how? If not you and I, why? For such a time as this, I stand here right now. Every broken road I travel down. Every chance I miss got me here somehow. Every shattered, winding, turn and twist. For such a time as this, for such a time as this, I stand here right now. Every broken road I travel down. Every chance I miss got me here somehow. Every Shattered, winding, turn and twist for such a time as this. For such a time as this. For such a time as this. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Well, good morning to the warriors of the remnant. Good morning. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, let's, let's begin this morning. We blow another shofar. If you have you had Sunday morning, it's we blow the shofar every Sunday. I know I've blown it a little more lately, but Sunday is the day that we say, have you had enough shofar so far? 
And no, we have not. So let's bring down the walls of the works of the enemy with a blast of the shofar, just like when they did the walls of Jericho and they blew the trumpets and the shofars and the, and the timbrels and all that, and the walls came tumbling down, breaking the walls of the enemy's strongholds. <laughs> Practicing, practicing here and there, and I've gotten better. But the thing is that we sounded the trumpet, and the walls are now being, and then the walls are coming down. They're crumbling. The enemy strongholds will not hold. Now, on that basis, on that note, the Lord gave me a word. Well, gave me a word yesterday morning as I was praying, and I was. Uh, and seeking him about all these different things that have been happening and uh, attacks of the enemy and where it's coming from and all these things. And <clears throat> here's, what, here's what the Lord told me, okay? I was talking to him about, well, we've been talking about witchcraft and all those things and, and, get, and people getting and infiltrators coming into the groups and causing trouble and division and strife and problems and things. And I've been really focused on that. Yesterday morning, the Lord told me, and, I, and I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to say it the way that he gave it to me. He, he told me, he said to me, do you think that I do not know what's going on? Do you think that I don't know who these people are? He says, I see the thoughts and intents of the heart. I know who is who. I know what is what. He says, you focus on my word. He says, I will take care of, the, of those people. I will handle that. So I just want to say this. The Lord knows who you are. He knows what you are. He can determine between the two houses, which is today's message. He knows whether you serve him or if you serve another God or another agenda or another anything. He knows. So my advice to you is if you are one of these people who is practicing magic or any of these things, witchcraft, sorcery, any kind of manipulation of the elements. If you're Wiccan and you're here and you're trying to come up, yes, we know that we know that, that, that they're here. We know that they're here. We know that they're in Gideon's army too. More importantly, the Lord knows who you are. You're not hidden. You are not by any means hiding in the darkness. You are not by any means coming under the radar. Our God knows who you are. He knows where you are. He knows what you are. And he will deal with you. So my advice to you is while you still have time, turn from what you're doing. And be with the Lord. Leave the house of idolatry and, and demonic spirits and come to the house of God now while there's still time. So that 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 was it. That's it. God knows who you are, He knows what you are, He knows what you're about. He sees everything that you do. 
and he sees the, thought, the thoughts and intents of your heart. You can't hide what's going with fluffy words on the outside. You can't profess love on, with your mouth and then, and then turn around and speak evil against somebody. It doesn't work that way. Now that does not mean that we will that I will that we will not be still be praying against these things. We certainly will be. But I'm not gonna focus on I'm gonna focus on determining where it's coming from. I don't need to do that. The Lord enlightened me. He enlightened me and said, You don't have to worry about who. He says you know the, the influence is there. Your job is to pray about it in the spiritual realm, <clears throat> not the natural. He said, I will handle the natural from my position in the supernatural. He says, you handle the supernatural as my emissary there. So, two houses. House of the Lord and the house of of not the Lord, whatever that thing is that, that you're worshiping, put it down now and come to the throne of peace and grace. Come to the throne of love and mercy. Come to the throne of the one true God, the almighty God of Israel, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And bow down and thank him Kiss his feet and beg him for forgiveness for not worshiping him because he is a jealous God. He is Jehovah Kana, a jealous God. Worship me and me only. The first commandments, thou shalt not have any other God before me. You shall not have idols of anything in the earth, of the earth, of the sea, of the air above, or of any graven image. That is his first two commandments. He's a jealous God. What are those words uh, of Billy Falcons? Never, never surrender. You see, you serve your God, Lord of the flies. I pity you when you meet mine. Give it up now and come to the foot of the cross and give your life to Christ before it's too late. I'm no longer I'm no longer worried about who you are. <clears throat> I'm now more I'm now more focused on what you are and how we can pray against your influence in these groups. Yes, my discernment, my spidey sense, as I call it, is prickling. But it's prickling because it's like, you know, when uh, you have when you when you have a uh, what do you call those things? Uh, 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 they detect radiation, a Geiger counter, and you put it near something that's radioactive, <clears throat> and over here it's fine, everything's you know all good. You move it towards something radioactive, and it starts to it starts to, start to tick. That's that's how that, that's how our spirit works. When you're around people who you're like-minded, everything's great. You get around, see, get around people who are different, who are not of the same mind, and all of a sudden you begin to hear hear that. It's a warning. That's where I am right now. God does not want to see. What I'm basically saying is, I'm, and I'm going to say it plainly. Either, either you come to God now or you will spend eternity in a different place. A place that is filled with smoke and sulfur and gnashing of teeth and agony and pain for all of eternity. And it, begin to grasp. Now, our little minds cannot grasp the idea of eternity. 
of an, an awareness word that never stops. Our our minds are our minds are pinned in on this existence, this awareness that eventually we will leave this body and go to and go to a spiritual level. When you get to the spiritual level, when you leave this body and you're present with the Lord, that body cannot be destroyed. Your body now can it, it's, it's going to age, it's going to ache, it's going to crack, it's going to hurt. But your spiritual body, your spirit body, is not is indestructible. And you go to judgment, and either you go, <clears throat> either you go on to be with the Lord, or they cast you into the lake of fire. That's hell. But what happens when they cast a spirit body, your spirit body, or should not not yours? It, speaking to those now who are doing the wrong thing, when they cast your spirit body into the lake of fire. That you're going to burn for all eternity, nonstop, never quits. You're going to burn, 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 and never be consumed. Is that what you want? No, it's not. Come to the foot of the cross before it's too late. Give your life to Christ before it's too late. It's not too late. You can repent from those sins, and he will. He is faithful to forgive you for those sins if you leave that house and come to his. This morning, we're going to talk about two houses. The uh, Bible in the year reference today is Psalm 107 to 109 and 1 first, and first Corinthians 4. For yesterday is Psalm 105 and 106, 1 Corinthians 3. Today's scripture, and I think I'm, I'm going to read the Daily Bread first. Um, it's called Two Houses. The scripture is, if you want to turn to it in your Bibles, it is Matthew 7, 24 through 27. And it says... This story says, uh, to test the stability of two houses, engineers simulated a Category 3 hurricane by using powerful fans that produce wind gusts of 100 miles per hour for 10 minutes. The first house was built according to a non-hurricane building code, and the other was put together with a reinforced roof and floors. The first house shook and eventually collapsed, but the second house survived with only a few cosmetic damages. One of the engineers summarized the study by asking, which house would you rather be living in? Concluding his teaching on values of kingdom living, Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The fierce winds blew, but the house survived. In contrast, the person who hears and yet doesn't obey is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The fierce winds blew and the house collapsed under the intensity of the storm. Jesus presented his audience with two options. Build your lives on the solid foundation of obedience to him or on the unstable sand of your own ways or the ways of a false god. We do have to, we, oh, I'm sorry, we too have to make a choice. Will we build our lives on Jesus and obedience to his words or disobedience to his instruction? By the Holy Spirit's help, we, uh, we can choose to build our lives on Christ. Good morning, Lisa Wiley and Charles Lexian. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I just see a couple names. I uh, Charles has been here before. Um, but I don't remember seeing Lisa Wiley here before, so I want to welcome her um, for the Forge of Fire. Lisa, we've been praying for you. I I, I know your story, and I and I hope I hope the peace has found you, or you have found peace in the situation. 
um, I, words can't express your loss that, that, that you that you suffered. Um, but just know that, that we have been praying for you, and we have been have been we we know that we have been praying for you. So, um, welcome to Forging the Fire. I hope you're a re- I hope you're a regular regular attender. I hope you begin to come here every morning and get yourself a little a little word, a little study time, a little prayer, a little fellowship with 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 other other Christians, other brothers and sisters. Um, Who's we? Talking about Gideon's army. Um, okay. Uh, the scripture today we're going to read is Matthew seven twenty four through. Where's that here? Seven twenty four through twenty seven says, "Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock." And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock, the rock of Jesus Christ. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And what that says at the end, it says, great was the fall of it. Now, of course, this is a parable, and he's talking about a man who serves Christ or a man who doesn't serve Christ. And we know when and the difference is, here's the thing. You see, when we serve Christ, when we are serving the kingdom, serving the throne of God, we're going to see trials we're gonna see storms we're gonna see things are gonna are gonna come and they're gonna come against us and they're gonna oppose us it's not gonna be a walk through the park with rose petals under your feet all the time you're gonna have the fiery darts of the evil one coming at you from all directions he's gonna he's gonna, he's gonna try and he's gonna try to come and steal that peace that peace that you have The enemy wants to come and take that from you. He wants to steal it from you. He wants to kill your peace. He wants to destroy your peace of mind. He wants to destroy your demeanor. He would rather have you walking around, calling everybody filthy names, judging everybody because of what they look like. I have a problem with that. I admit that. That's part of my storm. I look at somebody and I think, oh, he looks like, or they look like, whatever. Sometimes, sometimes I'm right. Sometimes, you know, I'm not, but I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. Yes, Karen. Very true. That's why it's important to stay in prayer. That's why it's important to base your life around, around prayer. You know, I heard a thing one time that said, you know, seven days without prayer makes one weak, W-E-A-K. And that's, that's, that's no, that's very, very true. It's very true. Um, then when the man builds his house, you know, like I said, you know, storms are going to come. Wind, you know, when we create the storms with high winds, winds are going to come. Storms are going to happen. But the question is, will your house stand or will it fall? Will your house, will your faith in Jesus Christ withstand the storm? Or will you fold and say, okay, I give up. I'm serving the other side now. Will you change teams? Will you stand no matter what the cost? Will you obey Christ's words, no matter what the cost? Will you say what Christ tells you to say, even 
if it might not sound exactly right to you. Will you do what he tells you to do? And I am not supporting this or condoning this, but I'm going to use it as an example. Um, the great healer, Smith Wigglesworth. Story goes, story goes, that people brought, brought a child to him, a, a baby to him who was having some kind of, 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 a, of a health problem. I don't remember what it was exactly. But they brought to him for healing. And he took the baby in his arms and he took it and he said to him, he says, can I do what the Lord, the Lord tells me to do? And he took and they, they said, well, they were, they were desperate because the baby was dying. It was, it was going to die regardless. So they said, yeah, yeah, do, yeah, do, do it, you know. So he takes the baby and he says a few words and he takes it and he flings it against the wall. And everybody said, oh, my God, you, you, you just killed that kid. You just killed that baby. And, when, and the mother from over and picked it up. And the baby was healed and recovered from whatever was ailing it. Now, I'm not saying go out and throw babies against walls. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that sometimes when the Spirit of the Lord speaks to us, it doesn't always Sometimes it doesn't make sense to us because we're operating in a different, on a different level, I'm, on a lower level than God is. What makes sense to God may not make sense to us. And sometimes he'll tell us to do things that sounds just a little, just a little off. But we have to obey. We have to obey. Obedience. That's fine, Cindy. See ya. Obedience. Lord tells you to say something that sounds like it might be just a little embarrassing or a little, and it might work somebody up, it might, might offend somebody. I mean, many times I've gotten words here on a, on, on on this on this Godcast on the Godcast in the past, where God has to say this, and I'm like, whoa, hold, hold on, wait a minute. You want you want me to say this? And the Lord says, say it just like just like I told you. And sometimes, sometimes, and I I've begun to realize that when He tells me to say things, somebody who is there has to hear it. Somebody who is there to hear that specific word at that specific moment. Now, here's the thing. With the two houses in today's today's story, one built on the house, on, on the rock of Jesus Christ, and one built on the sand of not Jesus Christ, of whatever, of your job or your whatever. Okay. When the storms come, will your house stand? That's the first question. Secondly, secondly, when those storms come and your house stands, what's the first thing you look at when you, when you see news coverage of a storm desolate, desolated area? A storm has come through, a tornado has come through, a hurricane or whatever, and they have the, the news coverage that's on there with the cameras going, and what is the first thing you always look at? You look at the houses. You look at the houses. You look at the ones that are, are, are knocked down, the ones that are standing. And you say, well, that was a good house. That was a bad house. House is half up and half down. The house was, house was, yeah, okay, you know. But you look at what at the houses if, if they're standing, standing or have fallen. The world is looking at you, and they want to see how you handle the storms of life. They want to see how you react. They want to see what you do when the storms come, when the enemy comes and, and, and tries to steal steal that thing, that you, tries to steal your peace, steal your salvation, 
to question your faith, to make you question yourself. The people out there who you're trying to witness to and trying to bring them to the kingdom, they're watching you and your reaction. They're looking to see because they know that you've just suffered uh, a loss in your family or um, an accident of some sort or a, or, or a house fire or, or some horrible, horrible thing that you've just gone through a, a storm of life, a storm. And they're watching to see your reaction. Did his house stand or did his house fall? Did he stand up and, and did he stand up in the middle of, of the whole thing and say, bless God, it could have been worse. Thank you, Lord, for what, what hasn't happened. Because you can always rebuild. You can always rebuild and take back physical stuff. And I, and I, you know, my, 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 my son had a, it was in a, in a minor fender bender car accident here a while back. Somebody rear-ended them where they were, they were in Chicago. And um, he was all upset because they damaged uh, his girlfriend's car. And I, I, I said, are you okay? He said, yeah, we're fine. I said, that's what's important. That car can be replaced. You cannot. You are one of a kind. You're irreplaceable. So thank God for what didn't take place. Because the world is watching. Non-believers are watching. You see, like to believe this or not, this, this is the truth, okay? Non-believers are watching believers to see if we will walk the talk. If we will do what we say we'll do, they want to see how much you really believe what you say, how much you really believe what comes out, out of this mouth, what is in this head, what is in your heart. They're watching. They're watching. So will your house stand? on the solid rock of Jesus Christ or would it fall because it's it's built on shifting sands I'll give you an idea of how much how much sands can shift we live, we live here in Indiana in South Bend here and not far from here is uh, the Indiana Dunes National Lake Shore it's a national national uh, place you know big sand dunes has been there for thousands of years you know and they have big sand hills there and stuff, and the lake's right there, and a big beach. And it's a beautiful place. And a lot of woods and air, and, and back there, it's beautiful back there. But, and, and, and it extends for, I mean, the dunes extend all the way into Michigan. I mean, the, I mean, the, the actual, not the sand dunes park, but sand dunes basically are widespread around here. Okay. And we went on uh, a, uh, a buggy ride last year in Saugatuck, Michigan, and the guy was telling us that um, that these sand dunes, they actually move with the wind because all, the, way the, the sand blows and shifts and changes every year, that the, that the sand dunes themselves and the whole landscape of the dunes shifts I think he said a half an inch per year or an eighth inch per year or something, whatever it was. It was like it was like less than an eighth inch per year, but everything moves a little bit every year. A little bit more every year. A little bit more. Sand can shift is not a not what you want to build a house on or any kind of a structure for that matter. Yeah, they are. They're very. They're very beautiful. Um, you know, this this guy, this uh, buggy ride was was really cool. Um, if you ever get a chance to do that, go to Sagatuck and uh, just look up the uh, the, the uh, sand buggy rides, or I think that's what they're called. And they're they're a blast. And 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 they're also they're also pretty inexpensive. They're very very affordable. 
Um, but back to the regularly scheduled programming. So the world's watching. They want to see how you react when trouble when trouble comes your way. Because anybody, honestly, truthfully speaking, anybody can be happy and great and, and, and all and all and all rainbows and unicorns when things are going good. Things are going good. But send in one little twister into there. Send one little thorn. Throw one little pebble into the, into the pool. And the ripples can cause devastation. How will you react in those times? That's what the world is watching. Supporting scriptures. Okay, for this. Um, in Matthew eleven seven. And do I have it here? No. The page turned somehow. I don't know how that happened, but okay. Eleven seven. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went you out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went, then, then, then 8 says, But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. So this he's saying, you know, what did you what did you come to see? A reed shaken by the wind? He's saying, did you come to see a guy who would go with the flow? If if the wind blows left, he goes to the left. If the wind blows right, he goes to the right. No. No. They're looking at us, at Christians, to see, to make sure that when that, that we keep our vision focused straight ahead and we don't move to the left, left or to the right. That we stay firm, that we stand on our foundation, that our foundation is firm, is strong, is founded upon the great God of Israel. So he said, when they came out to see John the Baptist, what did you come to see? A reed shaken with the wind? Because he was under persecution too. What did you come out to see? What do you want to see? What, what are you watching? What are you doing? Jesus is saying they're watching. And my mouse is not working. I don't know why. Where is it? I've lost my mouse, and now my screen has something all over it. Hold on, folks. What in the world was that? It's almost it's almost like almost like somebody uh, was controlling my, my computer there for a second. My uh, my mouse is not working. Well, there it is. It's working very, very, there we go, okay. And the second thing is Joshua 24, 15, and here is the crux of it. This is Joshua talking to the nation of Israel. He says, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods of which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He told him, and let me, let me bring up Matthew 24, 15. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at Matthew. Joshua 24, 15, because he says a lot more there than, than, than just that. In 15, he asks, he asks, he tells him, he says, you choose who you'll serve. My house and me will serve the Lord. 
And the people said, oh, we will serve God and we will know that, that we should not forsake the Lord to serve other gods. And he goes along and he says, and he says, um, if you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he hath done you good. And the people said, to him, they kept saying, we will serve the Lord. We'll serve the Lord. And he kept telling them, he says, and he, but they were already, already in idolatry. And he's telling them that they had to turn from that. They had to turn from that. And just because, and they were saying, oh, we'll serve the Lord. Time because he was telling them. And this is the problem that God had with the Israelites at different times. Is they could not keep their focus on him. They 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 time and time again turned back to go to, to brazen idols, to different things. They, they would accept the gods of the land in which they were living. See, God knew when he gave them the promised land that it was surrounded. It was surrounded on all sides by other civilizations that did not worship him, that they were heathens, basically. The idea was he was going to get them, he was going to put them in the promised land, and they were going to bring his kingdom out to them. But instead, sometimes the Israelites began to accept their gods. That's where Baal came from. That's where Molech came from. That's where the golden calf came from. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You choose this day who you will serve. Speaking to all of you out there. Because I know that there are the majority of us are together with serving the Lord. And there are a few who are here to divide and try to conquer and cause strife and problems and trouble. And I say to you again, you're not hidden. You're not covered up. The Lord's eyes see you, and you will be dealt with. I won't, I or anybody here won't have to lift one single finger other than praying against you because you're praying against us. And I know you're out there. Yes, I know you're out there, and the other the other people here who serve the Lord know you're out there. More importantly for you is the Lord knows you're there. And he knows who you are. He knows what you're going to do next. We're going to pray against you because you're praying against us. That's spiritual warfare. Our God is much bigger than yours. And don't sit there and tell me, oh yeah, oh yeah, but my God is 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 the devil, and uh, uh, he's just as big as God. No, he's not. Do not forget. Do not forget that our enemy Lucifer is a fallen angel, an angel that was created by God. Angels are creations of God. He gives them free will, and this one decided he was going to try and take God's throne. So don't tell me your God is just as big as mine. Don't tell me the devil is just as big as my God. Because my God made that one. And the devil is not a God. He is not a God. You may worship him as one. He may tell you that he is one, but he is lying to you. He is the
the father of all lies and the author of confusion. And when he speaks a lie, he speaks his own. That is his language. He doesn't know the truth. The truth, there is no truth in him. He has deceived you. And the Lord God of Israel stands waiting for you to discover this and turn away from him and come back to the kingdom of God. Which house are you living in? The house of the Lord built on a solid rock or the house of the enemy built on the shifting sands? Why do you think why do you think all of the workings and the things of the of the of the devil are constantly being knocked down and, 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 and overcome? Because that situation is built on shifting sand. It cannot stand. The minute God says, with a little wind, it falls over. Do not forget. All of you out there who are Satan worshippers, devil worshippers, witches, sorcerers, wizards, uh, demon worshippers. Yeah, that's another thing. If you're a Satan worshiper, he has legions and legions of, 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 of demons, and you're worshiping them. Those demons are not gods. They may seem to you like it, but they're not. And I can prove it in Scripture. I can prove it in Scripture. Job chapter 1. And there came a day when all the sons of God came before God, and Satan came with them. Why did he come? To ask God's permission to afflict his servant Job. He couldn't just come and do it. He couldn't just come and afflict Job. He had to go before God and ask his permission. If the devil needs to ask God's permission, who's in charge? You tell me. And that is scriptural. As a matter of fact, let me give you let me give you the reference for that one, so you can go look up for yourself, and you, and you can eat your own words. Okay, Job chapter 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down in it, roaring like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. And he said, Hmm. Job looks delicious. I think I'll try him. And the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth? Now, why did God offer Job? He didn't. He didn't. I think the enemy had Job in his sights already. And God knew it because God knows all. He knows everything. He says, Have you considered my, my Satan Job? My, 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 I'm sorry. My servant Job. That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and, and escheweth evil, which means hates evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? What a challenge, huh? And when we know the, we know the end of the story, God told the, told the enemy, fine, you go and you afflict him. You can do anything to him you anything to him you want. Just do not touch his life. And the bet was that no matter what the enemy did to Job, Job would still stand and praise God. That his house would withstand that storm. His house would not fall because his house, his faith was built on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. He said, eventually, he ended up saying, 
as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He stood firm. He stood, he stood pat. He did not back down. He did not back away. He remained faithful to his, his to his to the one true God and withstood the storm. His house was built on the solid rock. Is yours? Is mine? That's the question today we ask today. And my mouse is there we go again. It's good morning, uh, Muhammad Job. How how you doing, Muhammad? Good to see you here, man. Muhammad is um, a gentleman I've been speaking to. He lives in the Gambia, Africa. Um, he's a he's a, he's a a fairly new convert about a, about a year or so. I've been talking to him uh, on 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 uh, Messenger for a little while. Yes, um, so God allowed Satan, Satan to afflict Job, anything but his life. And I mean, the devil did his work. I mean, he came, took all his land, his property, his cattle, his animals, his family, his children, all of it, gone. Everything he had, he took all of his, you see, that's, the thing about what happened to Job, <clears throat> everything that the enemy took from him was physical, material. Yeah, his children, his sons, his daughters, his land, his property, his animals, his uh, his herds, all of it, all of it, his money, gone, everything. Took him everything that he had physically. Materially, was gone, and Job never turned away from God. Even his friends said, "You know, why don't you?" <clears throat> and he even afflicted his body with boils and sores, and that made him miserable. Even his friends, even his wife, said to him, "Why don't you just give up and die? It's it's over for you. You're destroyed. Give up and die." And he refused. He refused. Because he knew that the blessings of God were greater than the trials of this world. And he was restored. He was totally, entirely restored after this whole thing happened. Because his house was built upon the solid rock of Jesus Christ. So everybody, so now I know that there are those out there this morning. Who do, may, who do not know the Lord Jesus as their Savior. Right now, you don't, right, right now, right now, your house is built on the, on the shifting sands of uncertainty, the shifting sands of materialism and money and, uh, and ownerships and things like that. But the God that we serve is here this morning to receive you into the kingdom of God. And he says, all you have to do, all that he asks you to do is to believe on him and ask him to come in and live in your heart. That's all you have to do. And then from that point, you listen to what he says and you're obedient. You do what he says. You listen to him. You take his direction and you go where he tells you to go, do what he tells you to do. If that's you this morning, say this prayer with us. If you already know Jesus as your personal Savior and you want to reaffirm your faith, say this prayer with us. Repeat after us. Father, I am a sinner and I realize that my sin has separated me from you. Right here, right now, I ask you to forgive my sins. 
I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. And that he died on the cross of Calvary for my sins. I believe that Jesus was resurrected, is now alive, and sits at your right hand in heaven, making intercession for all of us. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I open my heart that he might come and live inside of me forever. I give you control of my life, King Jesus, and I ask that your perfect and holy will be accomplished in, through, and by my life. According to your word, which cannot lie, which does not return to you void and cannot fall to the ground empty, I believe that I am now saved. <clears throat> And my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, King Jesus, for saving my soul this day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. There's no greater miracle in the world than when a new soul comes in, into the kingdom. <clears throat> now, I'm not sure who's out there wanting, just watching, not chatting. I can't see that. All I can see is those that are in the chat. And I know, and I know that they're here. And I know that Muhammad is here because he he hearted the video. So I see that. Be obedient. Listen to the Lord. Follow his leading. Stay in your Bible every day. Stay in prayer every day. And when it comes to the when it comes to the battles and the storms of life, don't worry about where they about where they're coming from. Just pray them down where they, where they are. When Jesus was in the boat with the disciples and the storm came up and he was sleeping, and the disciples said, "Master, wake up! We're the storm is up on us. We're about to perish." He didn't stand up and say, where'd this, where'd this come from? This is something new. He stood up and he said, oh, you a little faith. He turned and looked at the storm and said, peace, be still. The rain stopped, the wind stopped, the waves died down, and it was a great calm. He didn't ask where it came from. He didn't ask what caused it. He didn't ask why it was there. He simply prayed it down, and that's what we must do. We must follow his example. I hear you, Karen. I hear you. I can't imagine anything else in, in my and anything else and living my life any other way than this right now. I don't know how I survived for those those 20 years that I went away, other than the Lord just keeping me, keeping me going until until I came back. He always knew, he always knew I, I would return. I didn't, but he did. So now let's let's uh let's let's pray for our uh prayer requests and pray for each other. Because the Bible says to confess your faults one to another so that you may be healed. It says that the fervent, effective prayer of a righteous man avails much. And it says that we are we are committed to praying for one to praying one for another, that the world will that the rest of the world will know that we are disciples of Christ by the love that we show. So, Father, so many many things that we need to ask you for this morning. So many, many situations that need your attention. We need your hand. Father, what we need, what Father, what we need is a move of your hand like, like no other. We need your hand to move upon this country, 
upon this world. We need your hand to move against the evil of this world. More now than we ever have before. Father, the, the enemy, and we know that he seeks only to kill, steal, and destroy. <clears throat> Father, they are they are going all, all no holds barred, all hands on deck to destroy this country. Father, we need your protection. We need your hand to move right now against the evil that is residing in high places, the spiritual wickedness that is being placed in leadership over this country. We need your hand to move, Father, against the blue flood, against the the powers and the principalities that we are told that we are fighting against. It's not against the flesh and blood, not against the people, not against the persons involved, but against that which is behind them, that which is driving them, the demonic influences, the devilish things that are driving them forward and causing them to do these things. That is what we are to pray against. For we know, Father, that you love the sin, sinner, but hate the sin. You love the person. You just you just hate the influence that, that they allow themselves to be influenced by. Father, their, their house is built on shifting sand. But our house is built upon the rock of your son, Jesus. And overall, Father, when it's all said and done, <laughs> when it's all said and done, we will be left standing and they will be under our feet. They will be under your feet. They will be under our feet. Father, a great victory is on the horizon. A great victory is close at hand. And we know, Lord, that when it happens, it's going to be a move of your hand that cannot be disputed, that is unmistakable, that you have us in the palm of your hand, and nothing can pluck us out of your hand. Father, this day, right now, Father, this morning, Lord, we, we pray for those here in this chat room this morning. Father, for those who are watching or, and not chatting or just, just watching and, and not and whatever, just listening. Father, we pray, Lord, that healing enter their bodies. Lord, that you meet the requirements of all these people, of every single one of them. Father, that you bring the, the healing. I'm not going to say that you bring healing because you have Healing is your will for our lives. Divine health is your will for us. So I just I just speak healing into those who are sick in body, sick in mind, sick in the, and and they have chronic conditions, heart conditions, lung conditions, chronic pain um, of any sort, mental disturbances of any kind and sort, nasal passages blocked up and causing and causing problems throat problems, viruses that should not be there. Father, of all sickness, illness of any kind, right now, Lord, I speak your healing to enter these people right now from the top of their head to the very soles of their feet and heal this people 100% completely and entirely from all of them. Lord, your word says that, that your son touched everybody, and everybody that he touched was recovered 100%. That is what we ask of you this morning. Father, I speak deliverance to those who were oppressed by demonic forces, even those who are not even aware of it. I speak deliverance to those um, the fighting de demons of witchcraft and sorcery, wizardry, and all types of magic and spirits of divination, spirits of, of, of 
of demonic influence, spirits of manipulation. God, I speak them down right now, and neither do they are nothing in your sight. They are under your feet, Father God. They are under our feet. I speak them down. Father, overcome those spirits right now in the power of your spirit, of your son. I cover those people in the blood of Jesus Christ from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. They are washed, cleansed. They are saved. They are covered in your blood. And right now, I can hear I can hear devils screaming in my head. I can hear them screaming as, as, as they're fleeing these temples. These devils have made these people their temples. And right now we sanctify those temples under the blood of Jesus Christ and under his glory, under his Shekinah glory. Let your glory fill those houses, Father God. Let your glory fill their hearts. Let your light illuminate the darkness that has taken residence there and drive it out completely and entirely in the name of Jesus. Father, your spirit be upon all of your people in all ways and all. Lord, just be to your people what they need you to be. You are the great I am. To the sick, you say, I am your healer. To the oppressed, you say, I am your deliverer. To the hopeless, you say, I am your hope. To the faithless, you say, I am your God. To those in any situation, you just say, I am that I am. Glory of God be upon you this day. The spirit of the living God be inside you this day. Take up residence and just fill you with his glory. Because your heart under the New Testament, your heart is the temple of the living God. And his glory is residing in your heart right now. Let it out. His glory is there. Let it out. Stand in the storm. Do not be swayed like a reed in the wind. Do not be shaken. Stand strong. Never surrender. Never back down. For you are my people. And you are are my remnant. I will stand before you. I will go before you wherever you go. I said it in Joshua 1 verse, uh, chapter 1 verse 9, and I've said it numerous times after. I will go before you wherever you go. Your Lord will always, always be in front of you as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. I will guide you. I will lead you. I will take you where you need to go and I will direct you in the paths you need to take. You just have to follow me. You just have to believe in my son and in the sacrifice that he, he gave for you. And follow me. Obedience is a must. When I say it, you do it. When I ask you, you answer. Where I send you, you go. What I say to say, you say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the Lord has made, made a, a new covenant here today with, with, with all of us. I can feel a shift. I can feel a shift. Shift in his power, a shift in a shift in something. Ooh, hallelujah. Things are gonna change from this point on. And Jesus, and wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Folks, I, I just think we just need to raise our hands right now and, and just just worship. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy are you, God. Hallelujah. Holy are you, Lord. You who is and was and is to come. The lamb that was slain. Hallelujah. We worship you as the lamb of God, as the lion of Judah, as the God of our salvation. We worship you as Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tzidkenu, Jehovah uh, uh, Kana, Jehovah Makadesh. Jehovah, my Adonai, my Elohim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What better way to end a God cast than on that, on that moment right there? If you didn't feel the power of, of the living God flowing through you at that moment, I don't know how you missed it. <laughs> he's uh, he's preparing us for whatever is coming because something is definitely coming. And he's preparing us for it. Light divides darkness and all of the dark deeds will be revealed. Just like my, just like Lynn has just said, it will be revealed. God knows. That's for you, and you know who you are. I hope you get your life right with Christ. I'm speaking to those who are here for impure reasons, or that may be here for impure reasons. That was that word is specially for those people. I hope you get your lives right. I hope you see the error of your ways, and you turn from that. To the, turn from darkness to light. Darkness to light. <clears throat> Everybody, go with God today. Father, watch with, walk with everybody as they go through their, their ways today. Father God, be with them as they go, as they drive, as they walk, wherever they go, whatever they do. That you be with them, Father God, every step of the way. Let them be obedient to you. Let them just walk with you, walk in you this day and every day after. Father, protect them, Father God. Protect their homes and, and all about them. Send your angels to stand around each of them, Father God, around their homes, their finances, their vehicles, their cars, their families, their friends. Protect them from all of the atta attacks of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Tomorrow is Monday. Tomorrow is Monday. The 22nd of, Feb of, Feb of February. Wow. The 22nd of August. We'll be back on tomorrow morning. Same God time. Same God channel. And the, the Lord just told me now. I haven't even looked at the daily bread for tomorrow. 
or anything. And he just said that he's going to have a special word tomorrow. He's going to bring a special word to us tomorrow. So who needs special guests on a show where we have the Holy Spirit talking to us on a regular basis? Everybody, be blessed. Go with God. Go and live in peace. Be kind to all you, you, you come across today. Yeah, make it the best day ever, Jax. Just go and walk. Wow. I, I can keep saying it, but I can't help it. It's, it's just how I feel this morning. Let your walk be filled with love. Let when you when you walk places, let it be such an anointing after you go that those who come behind you will get a portion of what you've got just because they walked in your footsteps. Because you were there and you walked and they came behind you. That's how powerful the power of God is. No, Damaso. I'm right here in the present. I'm not in the future. Speaking about tomorrow, the Lord's telling me that there'll be a word tomorrow. So I know that. But he hasn't told me what. Now, let me, before I get into that, let me tell you that a while back I had I had a, uh, a word from the Lord personally. And he, I think I talked about this before, where he showed me a, like, a, like, a, like a, a sea of dark waters. It was like dark and it was kind of choppy a little bit. Sort of like Lake Michigan at night. Black, you know, dark water, kind of choppy a little bit. And but I couldn't see any land. And the Lord told me, he, he says, this is the dark waters of prophecy. He says, when, he, and he says, I will bring you here at times. And he has, and, and I haven't for a little bit. He says, I will bring you here at certain times. He goes, and you will hear things. You will hear things. He goes, those are thoughts. Those are my thoughts, his thoughts, that have not formed yet, that have not been have not been spoken to come to pass. And as I'm saying this morning that tomorrow we're going we're going to have a special word from the Lord tomorrow. As I'm saying that, I can see this dark this, these dark waters, like I'm standing on the shore looking over them. And they're they're not dark because of darkness. They're dark because the light of the light of the light, light of his mind has not illuminated them yet. These are his thoughts that he they have not they have not formed yet. They have not been spoken yet, have not come yet. They're already there. I can't explain it any better than that. Everybody go. Go into your day and have a have a great Sunday, Misty Rose. We'll, we'll be praying for you since you're since you're obviously having a little time today, Muhammad. Good to see you here this morning. God bless you, um, Misty. I think your little frazzle that says here. We're going to be praying for you. We're going to be praying for everybody. Uh, praying for Tim still, and I, I mean not Tim, Nathan, and uh, for Ted O'Dell's friend. Friends, family, mother and sister, uh, whatever family, niece's family. And uh, we're going to continue to pray for everybody. But for now, go into your Sunday. Have a great Sunday. We'll be back tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, 8, same God time, same God channel. Until then, we love you with the love of Jesus. Have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow. We love you. Have a good day. Be blessed.